So today we're going to look at how to use our variables and conditional logic to build an interactive input field, which when text is entered into, will display that text on an alternate page. Again, all using our variables and conditional logic. Let's dive in. So let's get started with prepping the assets that we need to build an interactive input field using your Figma variables and conditional logic. Now, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be using a pre-built input component from the UI Collective Design System. You know, it does need to be from our design system. It can be from any design system, but believe it or not, in order to achieve the functionality that we're looking for, we will actually need to detach our components. Can you believe it? I know, I can't really either. So let's go ahead and pull in uh, a quick uh, input component. And what we're actually gonna need to do is it's this text here that we wanna get our hands at. Now, we don't have the option to apply a variable, a string variable to the text as is, because we don't have the option to detach anything. You know, again, there's no option to add the variable here. If you want to add a variable, you actually need to detach your component. So this is what I was getting at when we're gonna to need to detach our component. So what I'm actually gonna do is just click in and detach this instance. Again, not every single one of the components, but just what I really need to get my hands at here. And uh, then we will be able to soon uh, apply uh, a variable. So let's uh, start off and create our local variable. It's going to be a string variable, which will just be our placeholder text. Placeholder text, and let's set it to type something. There we go. And let me then uh, click in, apply this variable, type something. There we go. So this is just our uh, default placeholder. You know, the user actually hasn't clicked in yet. You know, they haven't added any text. Let's then recreate the components and let's add a quick variant. And this will be our filled states. It's a property one to type. This will be our empty. There we go. And let's just change the color uh, of the text just to give it a little bit more. Um, there we go, make it look as if it's uh, filled in. Actually, no, while we're here, let's also change the input label to first name. First name and first name. Let's then uh, just set the interaction real quick, where on click, it's going to change to filled. Let's uh, bring in a symbol of that for testing. Yeah, always test your work as you go. Everyone, you don't want to get to the finish line and realize something's broken. And then let's just uh, let's set this back to empty, actually. And let's just go ahead and present this. Click, and I can see the color changes. So perfect. We have uh, our input states in the uh, format for which we need it right now. Next, let's actually look at adding the variables and conditional logic that will make this input field interactive. So now let's look at actually using our variables and conditional logic to make this interactive. Now, this is actually gonna be a really tedious process because the process that we're going to go through for the step here in order to get our A key working so that when you press A on your keyboard, it translates into the form you're going to have to repeat for every single letter in the alphabet. I know, very tedious, but again, once you do it once, you don't need to do it again because you can just copy that same input field into your other prototypes. But regardless, let's get started. So I'm going to focus on our filled state right here because again, our filled state is what we're going to be entering things into. So I'm going to uh, add an interaction that's going to set when a key or gamepad is pressed, so again, this isn't when you click something, you drag something, you hover over something, it's when you press a certain button uh, on your keyboard. And the first one is going to be A. So when I press A, we're going to set some conditional logic that's going to set our, if our placeholder text is equal to type something. Again, where I got the type something from is because this is uh, our first string variable that we set in the first portion uh, of this video. So I'm just pulling in the same value into our conditional logic. So if it's set to type something, oops, we are going to set a variable, our text inputs to A. So again, when I press, press A and our placeholder text is equal to what we currently have it set as, we're going to set our placeholder text to A. Now, let's test this out real quick here. Let's uh, preview that. Oops, forgive me. Let's reset the prototype here. Let's uh, just preview it for now. Click, and when I press A, I can see uh, that that works just fine. 
However, the problem is, is that it, I can only add one A. You know, what if I have two A's that I need to add in a row? What we're going to need to do next is set the logic that allows you to do that. And again, that's going to work really handy uh, for when you have letters that often fall uh, together, you know, like something like an L. So let's uh, open back up uh, our conditional logic and we're going to set an else action. That's going to say the set variable is equal to our uh, placeholder text to placeholder text plus A. So again, this is going to allow us to add two letters uh, in quick succession, uh, one after uh, the other. So now let's go ahead and let's just preview that. There we go. And now I can see uh, that that works just fine and we could add as many letters in a row as we need to. So what we're gonna to need to do next is I'll leave you all uh, to do it individually and I'm gonna pause the video to do it myself is we're gonna add all the letters of the alphabet in this uh, together following the same conditional logic and variable setup that we just did together. So I'm gonna pause the video right here and I'll see you in a quick second. All right, everyone, welcome back. So by now you should have <laughs> some logic that looks a little bit like this for all the letters uh, of your alphabet. One thing to note is that it is key sensitive. So in here, if you put uh, your U here or your U here to an uppercase, uh, it will put in uh, an uppercase. So let's just go ahead and just do a lightning quick um, preview of this. So A, B, C, yada, yada, yeah, perfect. However, one thing that we don't yet have is a backspace. So if I press backspace as I'm doing right now, there's no way to actually uh, go back to the beginning. So what we're going to do next is just add a little bit of backspace functionality. So when you do hit that backspace, it's just going to clear the input and you can start from scratch. So say similar type of uh, logic here. So let's open it up and we're going to set a uh, key gamepad, which is going to be our backspace. And what we're going to do is very similar. So set some conditional logic that's going to state that if the placeholder text, but instead of being equal to, we're going to set it to not equal to type something again, which is our original placeholder text type something. There we go. We're going to set the placeholder text to type something just like that. So let's have a quick preview. There we go. Let's type something. And now essentially what this is saying, what our logic set up is that our, if our placeholder text does not equal our placeholder text and we hit backspace, it's going to reset to our placeholder text. It's just a real simple, easy way to clear the form. Next, let's look at actually taking the value that is inputted in our input field and translating that into a dynamic UI. Lastly, let's look at how we can take uh, a value that is inputted in our input field right here and translate that value into an actual UI element in a legitimate prototype. So what we're going to look at is how I can enter my name right here in this input field and then have that name displayed on another page of a prototype. So what we're going to do, let's start off uh, with some frames. If you know me by now, you know I love my iPhone 14 frames. And uh, let's bring over our input field and let's just build a lightning quick button. It's going to say continue. Add some auto layout, set the fill uh, to our UI collective purple, and let's set uh, the text color to white. Let's make it the uh, corners a little rounded a little bit. Make it nice and funky. There we go. And then let's add some text. So it's going to say hello, center that, center that, and let's make it nice and big. Again, it's not going to be the nicest, but just enough to get our point across. Uh, so hello, and then we're going to put the name beneath it make it a little bit smaller, you know, let's say uh, 24. And what we're going to actually do is uh, apply our placeholder text variable to this element. Placeholder text, there we go. Let's make it a little bit wider. And when I press uh, continue, it's gonna to navigate to that page. All right, so now let's present this moment of truth. Kirk, oops, Kirk, continue. Hello, Kirk, there we go. And that is how you create a dynamic UI using your dynamic input.
Thanks for watching today's video. I encourage everyone to sign up for uicollective.co and especially join our free Slack channel where you get access to myself and Mike directly where you can ask any types of design or design system questions. We also did recently just launch our UI Collective design system where you get access to a ton of awesome components. However, this is a paid template. And we also do have some Figma plugins coming soon. So if you join our Slack channel, you'll be first notified and you can also join our beta testing group as well. Hope to see you online, UI Collective.